Leave Chapel a Rowan! Yes, parts of the internet are already turning on Chapel Rowan in record time. And it's yet another example of this insane cycle that happens with young celebrities where everyone gets too obsessed with them and then suddenly decides they hate them. So why does this happen? Why are people mad at Chapel? We've done all the internet poisoned research so you don't have to. As usual, on Scroll Deep with me, Benedict Townsend, brought to you by Nando's New Menu. So who is Chapel Rowan? Uh, that might sound like a ridiculous question, but you know, her rise to fame has been so meteoric that you might have missed it. Basically, she's a singer from the Midwest who even by modern standards has had just a light speed rise to fame, going from relative obscurity in 2023 to one of the biggest stars in the world less than a year later. She had under a million Spotify listeners in September 23, and as of this month, she's hit 40 million listeners, around 40 times more than the 1 million listeners she had for you maths heads out there. And with that breakneck race to megastardom, there's also been a super fast acceleration in fans getting way too obsessed with her, being weird, and gradually ruining her life. And this has spilled out into some new TikTok she's posted, where quite frankly, she's had enough of your shit. It was a pretty crazy trajectory. Her debut album was just largely a word of mouth success. It sold 3,000 copies when it first came out. Not a success at all. Her song Pink Pony Club, which is now an iconic gay anthem, was an absolute flop when it was first released in 2020. But then, largely off the back of supporting Olivia Rodrigo on her US tour, a viral Tiny Desk concert, and some incredible festival shows, including a record-breaking in terms of attendance, show at Lollapalooza. She has just gone from strength to strength. She's currently number two in the Billboard charts behind a little known up and comer by the name of Taylor Swift. I hope she plays Hot To Go. This is an Olivia Rodrigo concert that The rise has been unimaginable, but unfortunately, there is talk of the fall. So what did she say in these TikToks? Well, basically she called out creepy behavior. These were her words. If you saw a random woman on the street, would you yell at her from your car window? Would you harass her in public? Would you go up to a random lady and say, can I take a photo with you? No, what the f And then get mad at this random lady? Would you be offended if she says no to your time because she has her own time? Would you stalk her family? Would you follow her around? Would you try to dissect her life and bully her online? This is a lady you don't know and she doesn't know you at all. Would you assume that she's a good person? Assume she's a bad person? Would you assume everything you read about her online is true? I'm a random bitch. You're a random bitch. Just think about that for a second, okay? Unfortunately, I'm afraid she ate with that one. She went on, she said, I don't give a f if you think it's selfish for me to say no for a photo or for your time or for a hug. That's not normal. That's weird. It's weird how people think that you know a person just because you see them online and listen to the art they make. That's f***ing weird. I'm allowed to say no to creepy behavior. So kind of very much drawing a line in the sand there. And of course, this being the internet, people have immediately decided to be very annoyed about that. People have immediately started conflating what she's talking about there, which is obviously behavior that goes way over the line with just general fan behavior. People talking out and saying, oh, Chapel hates her fans. Chapel hates people being a fan of her. How, how dare Chapel say all these things after we've supported her so much. And that's clearly not what she's saying. She's saying, please don't harass me. You know, if I politely decline a photo with you, don't get mad at me, which is her right. That is her right. I want to throw in parties for gay people on stage. Like that's my favorite part of this. And I want people to feel safe at my shows and feel like a community. I want to feel that way too. I love you and love is not transactional. And I think you know that. I just thank you for your support. This has nothing to do with that. This is actually not the first time she's spoken about this. Last year, she spoke about her struggles uh, with fame, which is interesting because, of course, you know, last year, it wasn't even anywhere close to where she is now. Even then, she said, quote, it's very difficult to process and maintain a healthy lifestyle and mindset because she has bipolar 2 disorder. She says she finds it hard to regulate her emotions and it's very hard on her body image. She says that success makes her uncomfortable and self-conscious. And again, this was before the album came out. So God knows how she must feel now. In an interview with Interview Magazine, likely place for an interview to be. She said, quote, in the past, honestly, eight weeks, my entire life has changed. It's been really emotional because I'm not just singing pop music. It's automatically political because I'm gay, which is a whole other dimension on top of this. Because she's gay, now she has that whole element being being picked apart. And, you know, now she's sort of raised up in a way that people in minority groups often are as being forced to be like a spokesperson. I think part of the issue here and part of the reason why fans have become so rabid is that she's largely stayed out of the 
limelight since she's had that explosion of fame. She's not been feeding the beast, so to speak. She's not been like pumping out videos, doing tons and tons of interviews. And I think that has inadvertently made the fans worse because they're so hungry for content and she's not providing the content. And that is not her fault at all, but it just shows how messed up these kinds of online ecosystems are. But the whole thing is just part of a cycle that keeps repeating. A person comes along, the internet gets way too obsessed with them. Like no one is capable of just being like a regular fan anymore. Everyone has to be like, I know their blood type, I sleep outside their house. The fans then think they're owed loads of stuff. They're like, well, I've streamed Chapel Roan every minute of every day for over a year and a half. She owes me now, right? And then obviously the artist is not able to reciprocate that because one, it's completely unreasonable and two, they're only human. And then the fans start getting annoyed at them and then they do the thing they love even more than building them up, which is knocking them down. It happens with everyone. It happened with Rene Rapp, it happened with Billie Eilish. It doesn't necessarily end their careers, but it is not an enjoyable cycle to go through for the artists or for the rest of us who have to see all this nonsense on social media. And I've never understood it because they treat these artists in a very transactional manner where they're like, I've given you so much as a fan, now you owe me. But they don't because there's already been a transaction, right? They provide music, you buy the music. Done, that's a closed loop, you know? They put on a concert, you buy tickets to the concert. They get your money, you get the concert. Done, sorted. It's not, I went to your concert, now I get to be friends with your cousin. That doesn't make any sense. But what it really makes me think is, oh, what's that? The doorbell. There's someone here, everyone. There's someone at the door. Who could it be? Oh, it's, it's the always gentle Nando's mystery bag. Yes, the most mysterious part of the show, where we find out what's in the Nando's mystery bag this week. Uh, brought to you, of course, by Nando's new menu. Right, let's have a little rummage around. I hope it's a life-size cutout of me. What's it? Oh, it's an XL wing platter. I can't even tell you how good these smell. Is there any precedent for pausing filming and then me just annihilating a platter of XL wings right here at the desk? But what else is in the mystery bag? Get your guesses in now because I'm going in. What's it gonna be? Oh, 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 oh. What could it, what could it be, boys? <laughs> it's a broom! Perfect for flying to Nando's for a nice snack. All of you who had ex extendable broom on your guest list, congratulations. Thanks Nando's and the mystery bag will be back next episode. But other artists have gone through this before. I mean, Doja Cat is a famous example of someone who has, shall we say, a tense relationship with their fans. Doja lost over 200,000 Instagram followers in 48 hours. Following comments she made about her fans and fan pages that were dedicated to her. She said to her fans that she doesn't love them. Uh, she criticized the kitten's nickname that they've made up for her. She said that, you know, that's not the name. I didn't come up with that. Don't give me, don't come up with a weird name for yourselves. One fan said a classic phrase, which is that she would be nothing without her fans to which she replied, quote, Nobody forced you. I don't know why you're talking to me like you're my mother, bitch. You sound like a crazy person. Just this thing of like, you owe everything to the fans. You have to give in to every whim. It's like, if you ask someone for a photo and they say no, you don't just get to have a photo. I mean, Kiki Palmer also experienced this. No means no, even when it doesn't pertain to sex. I was at the bar the other day and this girl asked me three times for a picture and I told her three times nicely that I did not want to take one with her. She still proceeded to film me against my will. Gross, don't do it. Rene Rapp also had to call out fans after they were holding up just absolute filth on signs at her shows, which made her uncomfortable and made her feel bad. So yeah, you know, sometimes we try and both sides this a little bit on the show, but I think it's pretty clear how I feel about this. I just think, you know, be reasonable. I know there are plenty of reasonable Chapel fans out there who would leave her alone or just... Here's the thing, right? If you're the biggest Chapel Rowan fan in the world and you get to meet Chapel Rowan, why would you not be content to just meet her? Why is it always about the photo? And I think it's because a lot of these people are so online and so internet poisoned that they have to have have the photo because the photo is a way of making that real world interaction back into online content. Because if you just meet Chapel and talk to her, you have no content or proof about that. How can I put that on my grid? But it's like, if you really care about this person, why would you be like, shut up, shut up, let's get a photo. Why wouldn't you be like, hey, let's talk for 30 seconds. Surely that's a nicer interaction. Chapel being like, hi, great to meet you. Shut up, Chapel. <laughs> Is that a gong? <laughs> we should get a gong for the show. And that's my opinion. Whoa. 
So how have people been lashing out? People immediately taking her words out of context or just ignoring her words and inventing new words. The way people are talking about it, you'd think she went on TikTok and said, I hate all my fans, please don't ever listen to my music, which is not what she said. Just such a sense of entitlement am among people on, on Twitter. And also a kind of a sense of like, uh, toughen up kid. You know, there's this uh, video that went round of a young Taylor Swift talking about how your life changes when you get famous and about how people coming up to you is, is part of the job and stuff. Anything outside my house or my apartment uh, doesn't ever really feel normal. And I've seen people sharing that and people being like, she should be more like Taylor. And trust me, if there's one thing I can guarantee Taylor Swift would love is you using her to bring down another woman. I'm sure Taylor Swift would think that's a great idea and would really love that. But that's not what Taylor Swift is saying in that video. She's, she's saying, look, you have to understand your life is changing. But Taylor Swift is not saying it's okay to come up and harass me. It's okay to you know, keep forcing yourself on me for a photo when I say no. That is not what Taylor Swift is saying. And that is not an expected part of the job for a famous person. We already went through these cycles with Britney. We went through these cycles with Marilyn Monroe. It never ends well. It used to be the paparazzi would be hounding celebrities. Now everyone is the paparazzi. And isn't that deep? Uh, famousquotes.com. Put that over some clouds, put that on Tumblr. 4,000 reblogs, guaranteed. Pinterest would eat that up. That brings us to the end of the show. Thank you again to Nando's. But before we go, there is something I'd like to address. Um, this month, earlier this month, we said goodbye to a legend. Jack Carlson, amazing Australian man who shot to fame after his famous succulent Chinese meal video went viral. Uh, he was always a great guy. He really embraced the meme. He had plenty of interviews where he said he thought it was really funny, but he sadly died at the grand old age of 82. And in honor of Jack, please comment down below saying your favorite Chinese meal or favorite Chinese dish. And in tribute to him, uh, if we may, I think we should all stand for the national anthem. Gentlemen, what's the charge? Enjoying a meal, a succulent Chinese meal. Oh, gentlemen, I see you know your judo well. Get your hands off my penis. This is democracy manifest. Thank you for your service, Jack. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think there's nothing he would enjoy more as a tribute than me singing the American National Anthem <laughs> with his words.